Hey guys, I'm on Vancouver getting ready to go to Nanaimo to check out the Teo fat bike. The ferry I was trying to catch just left. Got here just a little bit too late, but looks like a beautiful town anyway, Horseshoe Bay. So I just asked one of the girls behind the counter for advice about a hike, and she drew me this awesome little map. I gotta show you this thing. So I think we're gonna go on an adventure out there. Found the staircase she was talking about up through the woods. Apparently there's gonna be a helicopter pad and a really nice view. <laughs> so let's check it out. I think this is as close as we're gonna get because the trail is closed because of blasting. <laughs> I guess they're updating the landing site. So that's a bummer. You can see where people are kind of going around, but uh, I wanna check out that Teo fat bike. I don't wanna end up blasted into the cliff side of the ocean. So maybe next time, but very cool. It's just such a lush landscape and Wonderful little town to explore. So let's get that ferry. That's where we're trying to get. Somewhere up there, there's a helipad. And there's the next ferry. This is the nice woman who was helping me get my ticket. <laughs> and then there's the ferry building. So it's pretty much Horseshoe Bay, but up there, there's just a ton of amazing houses. Such a, you know, really beautiful place. Really neat to see how clear the water is. And yeah, just appreciate it. Take it all in. Okay guys, we made it on the boat. I'm at the very front. We got on a little early, I guess. And I met some really cool people in line. So Michelle uh, from Scotland and Elizabeth from New Zealand. It was it was really cool, just neat people enjoying, enjoying the scenes and making some friends. We talked about bicycles, of course. Uh, Michelle thought I had no street cred because I didn't know what quid were and I also didn't know what a fortnight was, so she taught me. It was a lot of fun. This has been this has been really cool so far. Scotland. Hello. Well, you were teaching me all kinds of interesting things earlier. Yes. And you're going to meet your friend on the mainland. Yep. What's your plan today? What are you um, going to do? We're going to stock up on food and then take a lovely leisurely drive, drive not cycle, yeah. to Tofino. Tofino. And that's where it's like three hours where people surf, right? Yes. And I have not surfed before, so it might be another first for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited for you. It's, you know, it's tons of fun. You meet someone <laughs> and you have this time you just get to hang out and, and talk so thank you for yes. talking with me yeah, on this one nice yeah. so i made it we're here with patrick we're driving around the city of coombs and he told me about this he was like before we go back to the house i really got to show you this is the main tourist attraction here what is it goats on the roof goats on the roof they've got a restaurant they've got an import emporium where they uh, they bring all sorts of stuff from the far east mm -hmm. uh there's all kinds of little artsy fartsy shops uh, in the back, I'll give you a ride up, a ride up to it, and I'll show you. Okay, we'll check that. You know, we've been having this great conversation on the way over here. Patrick was telling me about, I guess the the French gentleman who who made tail fat bikes. Oh, Benoit, yes. Yeah, can yeah. you tell me what you know how you heard about them or? Well, off the electric bike review forum, uh, I was looking at the bull bikes in the uh, in the EBR forum, and uh, a man named uh, Stefan uh, told. I uh, did a post about the tail. Here's goats on the roof here, by the way. Oh, whoa. Check it out. They've got like a sawed roof. And goats. The sea right there at the peak. There's the yeah. goat. <laughs> well, that's fun. So they, it's a restaurant? It's an emporium. There's, this is a shopping area here. You can buy all kinds of food. Much of it imported. Huh. Um, that's partly a restaurant area over there. Okay. Oh, neat. Thanks for showing me this. You know, sometimes <laughs> you just go and we focus purely on the bikes and stuff. It's neat to kind of s see some of the cultural stuff around here. So we're on Vancouver Island and Coombs is where you're at. And so this is your 
And this is a it. Goat right up there at the top of that peak. He's got back to it. <laughs> That's awesome. What a funny and, thing. Yeah, a restaurant in there. It's a pretty nice little place. You gotta watch as many tourists here. Little country market. Well, yeah. so go on about uh, Benoit, if, oh. if you can. Are you okay driving and talking oh, yeah. a little bit? Yeah, fine. Uh, Benoit uh, was interested in electric bikes, bikes and he bought several of them. Uh, about, he bought three or four different bikes. And but he found there were things that he felt could be improved on all of them. And so he came up with his own design and uh, uh, based on parts that are available. and. Uh, uh, designed what he thought was a better bike with uh, uh, the cables were hidden a little better every part in it the frames an upgrade the, uh, the the derailers an upgrade the chains an upgrade everything's in the battery that oh, was a big battery. deal that for was, you that was a huge deal the, the uh, battery instead of having say 11 amp hours as a lot of electric bikes do it's uh, 17 amp hours and for a big guy like me getting into town and back that means I don't come anywhere close to running out of juice that's important and that was that was the big takeaway it sounds like so Patrick and I have been corresponding he's been real excited about the tail fat bike but it's an online bike right so it's for sometimes it's tough for me to find these in person that's why I took the ferry for like two hours today and came all the way out here and it's an adventure but you know these are just out in the wild um, I guess I would have to go to you were saying near Toronto, or he, he lives he's, he's in... He's in Montreal. He's in Montreal. Yeah, it's the French Quarters type of thing, so... Yeah, he's, uh, yeah the province of Quebec is, is mostly French people, and the rest of Canada is mostly English. Uh, we get along fairly well, hopefully, and... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah but, uh, I talked to Benoit, and he, he told me a bit of what, he's, what it was about. He uh, uh, referred me to his friend Stefan who spoke English better than Benoit does. Okay, so Stefan, he's the guy who had tried a bunch of the different bikes and decided that the tail was the number one for him. Yeah, he, he was, he's been the biggest uh, a fan and enthousi an enthusiastic and very good fan of the uh, tail bikes. Um, I'll just turn around this parking lot here. With Sounds good, take your time. So th the other piece of this is, uh, so Patrick had, had ridden his bike from his house, which is near Coombs, but it's down the road. But it sounds like it, you know, you were telling me you'd be kind of exhausted by the end of it. Oh yeah, uh, I, I would ride, it was about 11 kilometers, what, six miles or something, mm -hmm. into town and back. And when I got home, I would have to sleep for three hours. This is on a standard mountain bike. I'd, it would just exhaust me, it was just too far for the condition I'm in and the age I'm in, all that, you know, shape I'm in and stuff. Uh, with the tail, uh, because it's an electric bike, I can let the bike do some of the work. And uh, I have, I've been to town about four or five times and haven't had to uh, have a nap any after any of those rides. And That's awesome. Yet I'm still getting good exercise and I feel, I'm starting to feel in better shape and perking up a little yeah. bit, so to speak. Yeah, you're right? balancing out, I bet. You know, yeah. getting that physical act, the regular, plus social. You come into town, look how many people. This is a weekend, right? So it's probably a little extra crowded. Yeah, how long have you had the bike now? Uh, about a week and a half. See if these guys want to go out. Yeah. Nope, they're not. <laughs> well, that's not that's not too long, but you sounds like you've done it already like four times or something, ridden to town. Yeah, yeah I've, I've ridden to Parksville. Awesome. Two or three times, I went to Qualicum. There's this, uh, right down by the ocean. There's a huge hill, and uh, I was. Now, by the way, I don't mean to interrupt, but you got the stone goats there. Oh yeah, <laughs> the little statues, and that's oh, yeah. kind of neat. It's it's a cool tourist place. It, so coming back to, uh, you know, electric bikes in general, it's a great tool for people who, like me, might have an injury, or yeah. like Patrick. You're a little bit older, you haven't ridden for a while, and you, you know you have a distance to go. And uh, it sounds like the Teo is your favorite, in part because of the, the price and the features and the range and stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to your place. I'm gonna do my thing, break it down, look at all the specs, and then we'll go out for a ride. Yeah. Sound good? Well, I'll, I don't have a second bike, so you'll go out for a I'll ride. I'll go out for a ride. Well, it's kind of neat. Sometimes you get to hang out with the owner and see the environment where these bikes live, and it, it's, it, brings, it really brings it home, so can't wait. That's gonna be fun. Well, Patrick and I made it back to 
his little homestead area here in Coombs. It's just such a beautiful place. We got this beautiful backdrop of trees and of course, the Teo Fat Bike S Limited, right? That's, That's the one correct. you got? Do you want, tell me why you got the Limited. Uh, so I can carry stuff on the on the uh, the rat trap on the back and stay, and dry. stay dry. Yeah, because it gets wet around here. We just picked like the yeah. perfect day. Thank you so much again for inviting me out, and I'm gonna jump in and do my little breakdown. You do that. And uh, fun. yeah, this will this will be great. So we're looking at the large size frame here. It comes in two different sizes. This is 18, so we're measuring the seat tube length or height, as it were, and. Back at the site, as always, I've done reach, I've done standover height, I've done length, I've done width, so that you can determine whether this will, you know, fit into your house or uh, whether you need to get like the smaller size. It's definitely a bigger bike, and we weighed it, and it's about 72.5 pounds, which is a bit higher than they put on their website. But you have to remember, this is the limited. It comes with these steel fenders, big alloy rack. It's got this suspension seat post. Of course, the big tires, the big battery, all that stuff. But I think possibly the rack and the fenders add to the weight and then the bigger size because there's just more aluminum alloy which is what the frame's made out of. So I do love that as far as fat bikes go, you get some comfort, some cushion with these bigger tires. So these are the Kenda Juggernauts. They're 26 by four inches, so super wide, four inches, nice traction here. A little bit more of an upgrade, name brand. You can take them all the way down to five PSI, minimum five, maximum 30. 30 is going to be more efficient. It's going to be smoother rolling. You're still going to get some of that buzzing and stuff. If you take it down to five, that's when you can float across the sandy environments or if it snowed or something like that, you drop it down a little bit and then you get some more comfort along with this suspension fork. So you've got a good amount of travel here with a compression clicker that goes all the way to lockout. And Patrick and I were talking about that earlier because, you know, you're a bigger guy. You ride around and sometimes you, the bike, it's just a little bit squishier. And that's part of the reason he told me he chose the hardtail versus their full suspension model. So the difference between the Teo S and the Teo S Limited, aside from, you know, the racks and fenders and everything, about $200 difference, is that the, 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 the Limited, you know, there's a different color range. You've got like red, white, black. It seems like maybe those overlap a little bit. <clears throat> but then you step up in price a little bit higher and you would go for that full suspension. And again, I just love that there's this size range too. You know, he was telling me as we were talking earlier, there's just so many little details here that have been upgraded and I can really see it. We've got a tapered head tube, inch and eighth to inch and a half. We've got an alloy chain guide because sometimes, especially if you're in throttle mode, that chain can kind of bounce off easily. It happens to me a lot. I was, I've ridden some of the older rad power bikes, for example, that don't have the chain guide. Some of the newer ones do. The chain bounces off pretty frequently, and I'm thinking like the Rad City in particular when I've ridden it around the town. We've got a 12 magnet cadence sensor instead of just a six or even a 10, so that's really, it's, it's high resolution. We come back here, we've got a derailleur guard. This is also steel, and it protects not only the Shimano Alivio derailleur, but also the power cable coming from the battery pack up there. So this is one of the vulnerable parts on any hub motor driven electric bike that has the cable entering from the side. You know, some of them, Dapu in particular, they've put this cable on the other side of the bike and they've tucked it in behind the disc brake rotor just to kind of reduce some of the clutter and stuff. I don't mind that it's over here, but I do worry. I mean, you can even see there's some, some damage here to this little cap cover that might have been from shipping it might have been from riding or who, who knows but the cable itself is in good shape in large part because we've got this uh, derailleur guard i love that and then there's a disconnect here so if you do need to do some service at some point you need to replace those tires or you know change them up you can now let's look at those rims double walled aluminum alloy punched out to reduce some weight and maybe even give it a little bit more cushion feel and then the red accent and that just ties into the frame really nicely certainly appreciate that kmc rust resistant chain nine speed drivetrain shimano alivio it's not the shimano tourney seven speed we're talking you know more range and that's important when you're dealing with a heavier bike one that might be climbing and you know we don't have a mid drive here we have a hub motor hub motors are powerful this one's actually you know one of my favorites it's buffang 500 watt nominal 750 watt peak they say 80 newton meters of torque possibly at like the the perfect efficiency but you're, you're pushing on this huge 26 inch plus four inches it's like a 29er but with added weight and and so the mechanical advantage isn't there as much so you really do want a powerful motor and they've also got larger spokes 12 gauge in the rear 
13 gauge up front. Normal bikes have like 14 or 15 gauge. So a little bit stronger, also 36 spokes on both wheels versus 32. Those are the little attentions to detail that I really appreciate. And then even the way this rack is mounted. So it's on the seat stay, two bolts on each side, pushes it far enough back so that the seat saddle can go all the way down if you need to, keeps your gear hung, you know, kind of out a little way. It separates it from the rest of the bike. Uh, and that's important in part because this is a suspension post, very basic, 27.2 millimeters if you wanted to replace this with something better, a thud buster or a body float or whatever. But still, that's that's good. And we got a plush saddle with a handle. But part of the reason I'm, I'm pointing this out is it's raising the minimum saddle height. It's also with this handle could be a little bit more vulnerable. See, there's already a little bit of twist there. It's just something if you're lifting the bike, just be, be a little careful with this. You got about 40 millimeters of travel. Definitely better than nothing. Um, but it's, it's both a pro and a con in terms of uh, durability. And then the rack, they don't say, I don't see any stamp here, like 25 kilograms max weight. A lot of racks are 55 pounds max weight. So that's kind of what I'm going off of here. I do like that it's, it seems like almost standard gauge tubing. And then we have a bungee cord clip right here. So you could, you could use your own cords versus this spring latch. Or if you have panniers, you can clip them in right there. Pretty good setup all around. And then we've got a Spinninga Lineo independent rear light so this this runs off of its own batteries easier to forget more screwing around going back here and turning it on before you ride but i like spinninga and this one's it's big it's staying out of the way if you have gear loaded on that rack i'm happy it has it and the irony is it's like well why are there two lights there's a blaze light you've got the rl 1800 right here and patrick and i were talking about this and it's like well that you know the other bike the s not the limited it has lights too but it doesn't have a rack. So it seems like they just tossed it in. It's like, ah, you know, you, you got an extra light, but you notice how that would be completely blocked if you had any kind of baggage on this rack. So keep that in mind, make sure you turn on this light. That's also an independent light. That's one of the areas where it's like, yeah, if this was a higher end, more expensive bike, maybe you'd have integrated lights on both the front and the rear. But there are a lot of fat bikes out there that don't have any lights. So that's a nice upgrade. Coming back to the fenders, 100 millimeter width, and they're steel, so they're, they're tough but they might be part of the reason that the bike weighs a little bit more. Also, if you scratch them, they could rust a little bit. So I like that they're black, that they match. You might wanna just keep an eye on scratches and then touch that up. And while we're talking about scratches and nicks, the chain stay on the right, see how there are already some black, you know, that's grease and maybe like little chips and stuff, a couple of them right there. If you're riding this thing off-road, there's no plastic slap guard here or neoprene cover or anything. It's just they just left it kind of naked. It's aluminum alloy. Kind of who cares? It's not going to rust or anything, but your nice paint job is going to chip up a little bit. And you can see that this bike's dirty. You know, he's been riding around. He's been having fun with it. He loves it. That's what a bike's for, and, and they all take some wear. But just keep that in mind. Back up here, talking about some of those little upgrades. We've got internally routed cables. They look really nice. You know, just cleans up the bike, keeps the bike from getting snagged if you're riding through brush or something like that. They do protrude a little bit at the bottom bracket, but I think that they're fairly well protected and even routed back to that quick disconnect. Love the pro wheel, solid aluminum alloy forged cranks, 175 millimeters, so they're a little bit longer. You're gonna get these bigger strokes, pay me more power, or if you're a bigger person, we are looking at the large frame after all. I don't know what comes on the small or the medium 16. Welgo alloy platform pedals. These are what I always buy aftermarket on Amazon for a lot of the other bikes that just come with these tiny cage ones that just get bent up. They don't give you the traction. Adjustable length kickstand, rear mounted exactly where you want it so that it doesn't collide when you're backing the bike up and maneuvering it in your garage. The fact that it has a kickstand is huge because a lot of people, you know, you don't want to lean this against your wall, or at least I don't. I like having a kickstand and this one's adjustable. Very nice. So we come back up here. Fenders, they haven't been making a lot of noise, but I haven't ridden it a whole lot, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. We talked a little bit about the suspension fork. It's sort of an off-brand Mozo. It's a coil suspension, not air, so there's a little bit less adjustability, but you do have preload adjust, which is sort of like the force it takes to actually, you know, extend the, the suspension. So it's like, how hard does it hit before it actually it releases? Um, I think that's nice. 135 millimeter hub up front. 170 in the rear because this is a fat bike. So really big, kind of a custom frame. And you can see this fender again, one, two, three points of connection. Seems pretty solid to me. We've got the stitched padded grips. They seem pretty popular for these fat bikes. A little bit bigger, just gives you something to hold on to. They're really not that soft, but they do have that ergonomic feel. 
We've got a little compass, that's nice. Flick bell combo. I think Rad kind of made that popular. Maybe it was Volt Bike. I've seen that on a couple and it just gives you a sense that you could go out into the woods and hopefully make your way back home. Uh, another thing that's interesting here, so we've got this Zoom handlebar. Zoom's sort of like, it's a cheaper brand, but it's at least it's branded. It's black, it blends in, and then we've got this adjustable angle stem, zero to 60 degrees. So you can tilt it way up like we've got here for a more upright, comfortable ride position, or you can put it out front if you want more of a reach. The thing about this is there's only one bolt right there, okay, just one. Whereas like a Satori, they have multiple bolts, and then there's the tool-free adjustable ones. I, I guess what I found is if you're not careful, over time, if you, if you let that get loose, it can kind of get stripped and then you need to replace the stem with something else. And at that point, you might just get a stem that looks like this that's solid versus having the adjustability because you know what you want and you're going you're gonna to strip the next one and the next one depending on how you ride and whether you're really keeping an eye on that. No, it does not come with this side mirror, but that's something that Patrick got because he rides into town. You know, and he's on the side of the street. And it's nice to keep an eye out so you don't get pushed off the road or whatever. And then the rest of the cockpit, we've got a two-way Shimano Alivio uh, trigger shifter. Two-way meaning you can pull or push on that little one. I like that. And then I think you can do multi. That was like three shifts right there. It's nice. It's nicer. It's an upgrade. Oh, yeah, and there it is. Two-way release is what they call it. So, you know, 31.8 millimeter clamp, pretty standard. You could replace this bar with a riser bar if you wanted and come with a different stem. There's a lot to do up here or with any bike, I guess. We got our twist throttle on the right. We got our button pad on the left, pretty easy to reach. I feel like, you know, we've taken a, a pretty good look at this bike, but I haven't talked about the hydraulic disc brakes. I think that it's neat that this comes with hydraulic. I think the S and the S Limited, again, 1999 versus 2199. Hydraulic is great because you can adjust those levers and bring them in. That may be nice. Even if you're a bigger guy, you, maybe you're wearing gloves and, and you don't have quite as much grip and you need to wrap around a little bit. So that's cool. These are three finger levers. They do have motor inhibitors, which is important for overriding when you have throttle and you have a cadence sensor assist. It's maybe not quite as responsive as like a multi-sensor or a torque sensor. But the rotors are 160 millimeter. So it's Tektra Auriga Ecom 160, 160. For a bike that in this case is 72 pounds, that could be loaded up. They say 275 pound max weight, max load. So that could be your body weight plus other stuff people go over the max weights it sounds like pretty regularly and i'm not just talking about this bike i just think they just go for it but you know the company has to draw a line in the sand somewhere for liability the fact that this has the bigger spokes more spokes this big frame and i love the the lower standover height because it's it's kind of angled but i just I take all of those things into consideration that could be a lot of weight so 160 millimeter stopping those huge wheels versus 180 i would have liked to see 180 is what i'm what i'm getting at maybe 180 up front 160 in the rear if they had to but they've got to consider the cost somewhere and even the seat post 27.2 versus 30.9 or 31.6 those are all wider a little bit stronger this is very common but it's just it's not quite as as tough whereas i think a lot of the rest of the bike is really tough um, and those are the minor things. I got to gripe about something, right? So I think we've, we've been through most of this. We talked about the motor, the battery pack. This is 48 volts, 17 amp hours. It's like 800 plus watt hours. We're almost at a kilowatt hour, huge capacity on that. And again, important because this is big. You're not going to get as, as much efficiency with those tires. There's a little bit more friction happening. And that's one of the big, the big call outs. And I love that at least the weight here is kept relatively low on the bike and centered. Um, I think this is like 9.4 pounds. You might want to check the site for that. It's a heavier battery pack, right? But you've got a lot of power at your disposal for riding and there's a little USB port here. This is a standard size USB, probably five volts. If you're going to use this, you might want to go on Amazon or, or whatever and get like a 90 degree USB adapter so that you're pointing your cables upwards instead of like having it come out. Because as you're pedaling, imagine you're pedaling like this I just feel like it's it's close to where the action is happening. You don't want to accidentally kick that because that could get damaged and it, and it wouldn't work anymore. That happened to my friend Darlington on his bike. He broke his USB port and he couldn't use it anymore. Thankfully, the battery still worked. Okay, some of these displays have USB ports up top, but this one does not. It's not removable. Grayscale, it is backlit. Tons of options. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Press the power button. Jumps to life. Speed up top. And if you tap the, the power button again, it goes from current speed to average speed to max speed and then you keep pressing and then down here it goes from 
trip meter to odometer to timer. So there's a lot of adjustability just by pressing that power button. Then if you hold the up button, the plus button, it turns on backlighting and the headlight because this is integrated. It's pretty nice to see. If you hold down the minus button, it's one of our favorite features here. We got walk mode and that is excellent considering how large and heavy the bike is. Again, maybe it's loaded up and you're at a craft fair or you're hiking up a steep section of trail that you didn't feel comfortable riding on because it's, it's a bigger bike, you know? You can use that walk mode. I love that that's, that's enabled. And then you can double tap the power button to enter settings. And here you can set miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I changed it to miles per hour for this test. Uh, you can set the backlighting and a whole bunch of other stuff and then you double tap power to get out again. So that's really that's really the quick and dirty, I guess. So, you know, we've, we've explored everything on this bike that I could really think of. I welcome your feedback. Uh, you know, the whole reason this happened is because Patrick reached out to me. He was like, well, I really want to see the Teo. He bought one based on some of the other comments on the forum and stuff. I hope this is informative and I welcome further comments or if other people have done reviews or videos. These bikes tend to get like little upgrades over time, especially because it's a direct to consumer sort of thing. It tends to be cheaper. Looks like they have a one year limited warranty that covers most of the bike, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more like, yeah, you know, like go to the manufacturer if something broke. You're not getting quite the same support level as you would with like a Trek or a Giant or something like that, but it's a lot more affordable. And for someone like Patrick, you know, y you bought this bike, it was shipped to you. How long did it take? Uh, we had some shipping issues. Uh-oh. Well, that, uh, to be fair to, uh, to Benoit, the, uh, who uh, does these, the, uh, sup the shipper from, uh, from the Orient uh, bumped his cargo, bumped his... Because uh, oh, he's a smaller guy, right? Yeah, he probably got and a big off. company came along and we want this ship now and okay, we'll bump everybody else that's not giving us the big bucks like you are. And But you're patient, so it eventually oh, yeah. came. It's worth the wait. Because there's so many upgrades, it's, it's worth it. It really is. Yeah, there's a lot of great upgrades. It's a great looking bike. And you did something, your local bike shop helped you with this, didn't they? Did you telling me something about oh, that? Uh, well, actually, no, I just bought a mirror from them. That's where the mirror's from. What are they called? Give them a shout out here? Oh, yeah, uh, Pedigogo. They're out of Qualicum Beach. Cool, cool. And they sell electric bikes too, but this I didn't get from them. But they've got a good place for your accessories and stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, my friend Bob helped with the install. He's with, with fixing everything up on, with putting the kit together, I should say. Yeah. Uh, it was actually dead simple. The uh, benefit was I had a full mechanic shop of tools. However, I could have done it all with that little wrench that they supply yeah, with the it's bike. Great that they it's hilarious. It. It's great. A lot of times it's like you just straighten the handlebars or something like that. Were the wheels on it when you got this? Uh, the rear wheel was on it. The front wheel I had to install. Uh, it had some nice plastic guards on the bottom to protect it during shipping. Good. Uh, you had mentioned a, a part that was some damage. That was during shipping, oh, okay. and that part was actually sticking out of the box. So I meant to tell Benoit about it, but he'll probably find it now. It was very minor, and yeah. it works, okay? So, yeah. you know, coming back to that front wheel, it's using that longer skewer, and it is quick release. So that's one of the benefits yep. of, you know, being able to take it off and service it. But compared to a through axle, it's not quite as, like, big, tough, sturdy. Same thing, this is a suspension fork. You get a long travel, you get lockout, but it's not an air fork. These are the trade-offs when you're, you know, yeah. the value thing. So I'm, I'm really trying to be thorough here. I think I might hop on, but I wanted to give you another opportunity to say anything else that had come to mind. Well, I think basically as far as the fat bikes go, it's a nice package. It's, it's good, great bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. It's uh, got all the features I need. The main reason I went with, the, with it was the hydraulic brakes, which yeah. are, are an X usually... You don't get that on most of them, and the bigger battery, 17 amp hours, as opposed to use most uh, electric bikes are between eight and 11. You're right, hours. yeah, or maybe 14, but 17 is pretty, That's pretty big. high. You know, and so I don't want, I don't want to be rude, but do you mind sharing your weight? Oh, I'm about 323 pounds. 323 pounds. Yeah, this is weighted for 275. I didn't notice any problems with it. Not a problem. And those disc brakes, you did you hear me commenting like, oh, they're 160 versus 180. Have they stopped you okay? They've been fine. They've been fine I, for you. I think the fact that they're hydraulic as opposed to uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical is, yeah. is quite a uh, bonus. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you so much. I really oh, do. You, I, would you be interested in hopping on and doing like a little ride by? It's kind of fun <laughs> to see. Or you can hold the camera and I can do a ride by. I'll hold the camera. Can you do that. Okay. I'm gonna hop on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Feeling that suspension. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's actually really, uh, I mean, these things are fun, right? Like the fat bikes, you kind of go over stuff instead of going around it. And uh, I like that it has the throttle. I'm gonna, you know, continue with the display here for a second. Nine levels of assist is the way this is set up and nine gears. So I feel like there's some, you know, it's like, oh, they kind of match or something. It, does. it gives you a lot of choice. You know, which gear are you pedaling in? How much power are you getting? You probably take it up to, to nine if you're really climbing something, but you can probably hit 20, which is the maximum supported speed on flats, even when you're in the lower assist levels. And I, I love that it has a throttle. What I notice is that it gives you full power, but you have to be in one of the nine pedal assist levels and you have to pedal for just a moment. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's even based on speed. It's more like, is, are, is the rider pedaling? Once they are, they know, okay, it's safe. We'll, we'll unlock the throttle. And that's, that's unique, you know? Some companies give you f power fr from the get-go, but then you can accidentally hit it when you're moving the bike and it can take off on you if it's left on. And the other kind, it waits for two miles per hour. I feel like this is kind of a compromise. It just wants to know that you're pedaling for a moment. Is that, has that been your experience? That has been exactly my experience. It's uh, very handy to be able to crank the power up to about six when I'm around town in heavy traffic. Yeah. Because then I know that if I need to get out of trouble, I just hit the throttle, I keep pedaling and hit the throttle and I'm generally going a lot faster than I was. And Definitely. Out of trouble. Well, and yeah, through the light or whatever it yeah. is after the stop sign. So keep in mind, part of the reason I'm mentioning that cadence, if you're in a lower gear, so I shift down as I'm slowing down with my regular bike. And with some electric bikes, you kind of don't need to just throttle it. It's more like a scooter. This one, because you have to be pedaling, I would still shift down a little bit, prepare for those starts, and then your cadence sensor is going to click on a lot faster. Um, so I'm going to take it for a little more rides. You betcha. All right. Okay, yeah, so let's do, uh, this time I'm going to take it all the way up to like level nine. So we're going to get some real power out of this thing. Here we go. very typical a little bit of delay because it's cadence only sensor but you got those 12 magnets gets the job done that's what I was referring to though you want to shift down to a lower gear when you slow down like I'm doing right now in order to really get that that quick response and that goes for the throttle and for pedal assist and then that, so that's one area if I were able to change one thing about the bike I would make the throttle active at all times. You know, I'm kind of rationalizing it before around safety, but with a big heavy bike like this, it's just nice to be able to know that you have the power immediately. So this time I'm gonna take it down to zero just to double check. So I'm at zero, I'm pedaling, and yeah, the throttle doesn't work. Okay, so I'm click up, got that plus button, and now I've got the throttle working. And once you got it, you don't have to pedal anymore. But see, if I try to do it now, it's not working. Even though I have speed, it's because I, I need to move those cranks. Pretty quiet, not hearing those fenders a lot. And by the way, you do not need to leave the key in the battery uh, lock there. I just, I did because I wanted to show the battery being removed from the bike. There's the charging port right there, easy to reach, but it is near the crank arms. So if this gets bumped while you're charging, it could snag and you don't wanna break that because the battery is the expensive part. So I've unlocked this, slide it out the side. It's got that semi-integrated design. There's, you know, not really a handle on this, but it does have that little latch. It seems pretty strong. You know, you can kind of grab that and lift it. Just just be careful because, yeah, it's a little bit heavier at 9.4. And then it's got the little four tick battery capacity indicator. And I believe it clicks right back in. There we go. Feels pretty solid. Not wobbling around a lot. It's the same battery I see on a lot of, a lot of the more affordable bikes. Um, just a higher capacity in this case. And you can see the backlighting. It's this faint blue glow. Looks pretty good. Yep. I'm moving the suspension a little bit. 
for someone who's a, a bit bigger, you might want to, you know, to turn up that preload just so that the suspension isn't constantly bobbing on you. Hey guys, so we're going to take a ride through the woods. Hopefully this is a good position. I wanted you to be able to see the suspension. I'm going to try to keep my feet out of the way and I'm going to use a little bit more throttle once we're on the trail. But starting off, I'm going to do some pedal assist so you can listen for the timing, like pedaling, listen for the motor. <laughs> So one thing I noticed is that those motor inhibitors on the brake levers, they're pretty cool. They cut the motor, but then I was able to throttle again afterwards. And so it's it's working a little better than I thought. I'm not having to pedal as much to get that, that throttle to activate again. Get it started here. working pretty well but I am hearing that chain bounce possibly even bouncing into the chain stay maybe the fender a little bit um, chain hasn't fallen off so that guide is really working well but yeah you know it's this is kind of a hybrid bike that you could use just for around town for fun that just looks cool uh, but it's doing okay on this trail doing great on the straightaways and then some of those sharper turns you'll notice I'm it's like I'm veering off the path a little bit uh, maybe it's just because it's heavier it's the bigger tires it's not quite as nimble um, of course as a smaller bike with narrower tires and stuff but these tires have rolled over all the obstacles that we've put in front of it so far and we could go a lot faster I'm purposely trying not to crash chain. power. 
And there's the charger and the multi-tool. That's a two amp charger. It weighs like 1.6 pounds. It's fairly portable. It's not the smallest and it's also not the fastest. Bosch has like four amp. Some other companies have three amp. Considering the 800 plus watt hour capacity on this battery, yeah, that's, that's another area where you know, you're just gonna spend a little bit more time. But the first half of the battery feels a lot faster than the, the remaining half because it doesn't have to worry about cell balancing. Patrick, I have had a ton of fun with you. Thank you for, this guy picked me up at the ferry. He's been coordinating with me for like over a week knowing that I was coming out here to Vancouver. Uh, it's been a real pleasure looking at your bike. I always appreciate people sharing and just getting behind the scenes, kind of like some real feedback. I'm so this is good. Absolutely. For the full write up on this, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com, stand over height, pictures and all that stuff. Say hey to Patrick in the comments. We'll see you next time. Right. Ride safe. <laughs>